In this lecture, I still teach you new stuff, but I will try to inject something that is important. For example, if I talk about as uh, a dial, uh, if my uh, midterm has something related to dial, I may particularly emphasize those parts, right? So you are supposed to learn, and I'm giving the hint here already, right? So do not just sit there and wait me to feed you with some instant noodles, right? I feed you everything, you need to digest it and get the best out of it, right? So today I will cover the lecture first, and then I will go through assignment two. And in this whole process, right, I already just printed the uh, uh, midterm uh, papers, Right? I already had the question, so I know what I'm teaching you. I know how I'm going to grade it. So every word is important, right? And including all the videos that I uh, posted earlier. So make sure that you understand assignment two also, right? So we are talking about the quantum device. And one of the device that uh, we uh, should learn is the uh, tunnel link, uh, something called Esaki dial. This is pretty interesting. And again, why we talk, talk about this in cryogenic? Because quantum phenomenon uh, only appears or easier to appear at cryogenic temperature. Why is that? Thermal engineering, the energy of the electron K3 being low. Because the thermal energy uh, of the uh, electron or the carrier are low, they proportional to KT over Q, right? What is KT over Q at 300 degree? <laughs> right? KT over Q, right? Uh, let's say it is night 26 MeV at 300 Kelvin. So at, at this point, you should be very familiar with what is K, what is T, what is Q, right? Uh, if you say that you don't know that, I cannot let you pass, right? Because I mentioned at least 10 times in this class already, right? Either you did not study or I, either you did not come to the class. Now, uh, then what happens if it is a free Kelvin? What is the KT over Q? Yeah, 100 times less, right? So it's 0.26. MeV, right? And uh, of course, these are related to the so-called subtrestle slope or whatever. This is something important you should know. Okay, nothing to do with the Esaki dial, right? So what is Esaki dial? First of all, look at this band diagram. Do you know how to draw a band diagram? At least you need to understand how to draw a dial, right? If you cannot do that, you cannot be an electrical engineer. Right. So on the left, let me tell you this is the Fermi level. Can you tell me what is on the left, what is on the right? I mean, what type of doping is on the left? What type of doping? What is a dial, by the way? What junction do you have? P N junction, right? Which one is on the left? P or N? I go back to what you said later. Which one is on the left? Who said N? Why? Because the Fermi level is above the conduction band. You have more electron there. So go back to make sure that you understand what he's talking about. Okay? And which part is P then? It must be the other part, right? And why? This is the Fermi level. Why? Why it is P? Because it's below the valence band. And if you remember the Fermi Dirac distribution, whatever is above the Fermi level, you can treat it as almost no carrier. But those below has a lot of carrier. So here I have lots of electrons. And here also I have a lot of electrons, so I don't have hope, right? So that's why, again, which one is the valence band? This is the valence band. This is the conduction band. Is this okay? <laughs> Do not just think that you understand. You need to be able to draw it if I ask you to draw it. And again, this type of thing repeated many times in our class before. We start with dial. I talk about, uh, what is that? Impact ionization. 
Now I talk about Esaki Dayo. Right? If you really try to understand, at least you try to understand three times already, right? And so you should know. Do not complain after the midterm say, well, I, why, why I don't know this, right? You have too much materials. Now go back to his question. Is this forward bias or reverse bias? Reverse bias, why? So, so actually first I say something wrong. This is the Fermi level, not the daughter nine. I'm sorry, okay? This is the Fermi level. Daughter nine, this one. The solid nine is the Fermi level. Not the daughter nine. Daughter nine is for you to compare to the Fermi level on the P region. Okay, so now the Fermi level of the N is lower and the P is higher. So is it reverse or forward bias? So first of all, what is the meaning of reverse bias of a dial? Positive to the N, negative to the P. So now, does the N receive a positive voltage or negative voltage? Why? Because it's going down. Right? I told you many times already how to understand the band diagram. It's okay if you don't really understand why positive going is going down, but you need to take it for granted, right? So because I apply positive voltage, the Fermi level go, is lower than the Fermi level at the uh, P region. Okay, so this is in the reverse bias condition as is indicated here, V is negative. Now at this point, what happened? Now let's look at the, uh, uh, the, 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 at the P type, right? At the P type, the Fermi level is here. So I have some electron here, okay? Also I have some hole, right? Because the Fermi level is below the valence band. So above the uh, Fermi level, I have some electron follow the Fermi direct distribution, right? It becomes less and less if I go higher energy. At the same time on the N region, this is the Fermi level. So I also have electron here, but I also have a lot of empty space in this region. So because I apply negative to the P and positive to the N because it's reverse bias, right? Then the electron will be able to tunnel from the left to the right. Make sense? Any question about this? It is straight in the quasi-neutral region. So it is only straight inside this region. So it did not really spell it out. This will have, uh, will have some curve in the depletion region. But for Fermi level, in the, this is what we call the quasi-neutral region. We have very tiny electric field. It's still basically just a neutral region. So it is strict. But here it is not. So this is wrong. This line is wrong. It's just an indicator try to extrapolate. But outside this region is correct. Okay? So the real Fermi level, actually, if you write, uh, you, you guys don't need to understand this, but what we really want need is something called quasi-Fermi level. You have a Fermi level for electron, and then a Fermi level for hole. And then you have a splitting in the depression region. But we, we don't want to go to this detail, right? But the main point is that I have a lot of electron in this region in this, right? And then I have the empty, right? That's why the electron will tunnel from here to here. Okay? Can I have an electron from this region tunnel to this region? So to do tunneling, what do you need? You need a source. You also need a destination. It's just like, can you jump from your chair to another chair, right? Do you have someone sitting on this chair? 
And then is the other chair empty? First of all, do you have anyone sitting on this chair? No, no why? Mm, not exactly. Uh, I mean, this is not Fermi Dirac, this is total electron density. No, I mean, do you have anything sitting here? Band gap, not about way above the wavelength band, right? Because by definition, it's band gap. Even if it's just next to the wavelength band, it still has nothing, right? So, no source. I have a lot of empty chair here, no tunneling, right? So tunneling only go from here to here. Is that okay? Now, then I start increasing the potential, make it more positive. So now they have the same line because it is a zero bias. So the Fermi level align with each other. Okay, so no current, right? So now I come here. I tried, now is this forward bias or reverse bias? Forward bias. So you said forward bias. Any other student can say why this is forward bias? Also it's trivial. Again, what is the meaning? Uh, don't, don't, don't. Look at the bottom, only <laughs> look at this one. What's the meaning of forward bias in PN junction? I'll call someone to answer. What is forward bias in PN junction? You apply voltage? Positive voltage to P side, right? And negative to N, right? So now the P goes down and N goes up, right? Because the Fermi level at N side is here. The Fermi level of the P side is here, right? Is that okay? So do we have current? Let's look at this. In the source, right? Here on top of here, I have electron because I have quite a lot of electron below the Fermi level. And then in the destination, because the Fermi level is below the wavelength span, so I have holes also, right? Because whatever below the uh, Fermi, uh, above the Fermi level has hole, right? Because above Fermi level, you have less electron. It means you have more hole. So the electron can tunnel from here to here, right? So I have current. Now here I highlight uh, if it is right below this line, for those electrons right below this line, can they tunnel? From here, you can see a little bit, but at very cold temperature, at zero, bar, zero Kelvin, there's no hole below this line, right? Because for Fermi direct distribution, below the Fermi level is completely filled. Above the Fermi level is completely empty, right? So I do have a lot of electrons sitting here, but there's no empty chair for me to tunnel to. So for those electrons below this line, they cannot tunnel. Or we can say very low, very, very, or very small tunneling, right? Very small tunneling for this red region. Is this okay? Now, what if say I'm going to test you this, then is this okay? Still okay? No questions? Yeah. So, can I actually am amplify it? Yes. Like here, right? But then how do I do the laser? So, oh, I can. Yeah. Here, do you see that? This is the Fermi level. Right above the Fermi level, you have very few electrons. Make sense? Below the Fermi level, you have a lot of electron. Particularly at zero Kelvin, it is full of electron, right? Here is the Fermi level of the P region. Right above the P region, I should have a lot of hope. I mean, right above the Fermi level, I have a lot of hope. Now, for those electrons above this Fermi level, above the Fermi level of the P region, they can tunnel because I have electron here, and at the same time I have hole here. 
right, from above this line to here. About this line to there. Make sense? But for those electrons right below this line, where I shaded with this red lines, the red shaded region, I have a lot of electrons be here because it's below the Fermi level here, but it cannot tunnel to here because here I don't have hole. Here is few because it's below the Fermi level. No, you don't need to be above Fermi level to do tunneling. Look at this. If I have something, I know what, are you saying that above the Fermi level of the other, you don't have to, right? Fermi level is just a point to, how to say that? You have a distribution. Let's say my I have a distribution like this, right? And then I have another distribution from another side is like this. There's a bad drawing. I think the best is let's think about a building. Right? You have a building. Let's say you have three fours. This one fill up by this two. And then this one fill up by this. So it's not about the Fermi level, it's about I'm just tunneled directly to the corresponding level. Okay, I can go from here to here. Fermi level only determine whether this is few or not few. So it's related to Fermi level. But however, it is not only those above Fermi level can tunnel. Yeah. I just want to say the basic concept. But you're right. If this is full and this is also full, then there's nothing you can tunnel, right? So you can think in that way. That is also okay. But my main point is that here you don't have empty space for it to tunnel. Same for those from here. You don't have empty space for it to tunnel. Okay? So... But anyway, I can tunnel, so my current goes up. When I continue to increase the forward current, now this is larger. Do you see that? The difference is like this now, and now it becomes larger, right? So the P side is more positively biased now. Then what happened? Now I even have more region that I can tunnel to there because this whole region has a lot of electrons. This region has very few electrons, right? So that I have a lot more current. Here, this part cannot turn on. The overlap becomes more and more. Yeah, as you can see here, right? So when you increase the voltage, small voltage, this QV is only that much. Now I increase to here, the QV is larger. Do you see the distance is larger? Yeah. The voltage determines the separation of the Fermi level. Now the problem is that if I keep increasing, you will expect the current to keep increasing, right? But unfortunately, or fortunately, it does not. The reason is that now when you keep moving up, here I don't have any electron because it is the band gap. I can only tunnel from here to here, but but look at this. Only, maybe I just draw it. Only the electron in this band can tunnel through. Because for those above this band, cannot find any vacancies here. Why there's no vacancies again? Why there's no empty space here? It's inside the band gap, right? No seats for you to tunnel. For those electrons here, I have a lot of, uh, I mean, here I have a lot of hole, but nothing to tunnel to here. Again, because this is inside the band gap. So nothing to tunnel into the vacancies. Only the small overlapping region can it tunnel, right? Because in this region, I have electron, and this, electron, this region, I have hole. 
so that I have current. But this overlapping region is smaller than this one. As a result, the current will go down when you increase the voltage. And then eventually, when you have a large enough bias, it becomes a regular dial, forward bias. You just uh, full Fermi, fermionic emission, right? This is the fermionic emission, not tunneling. Then your current picks up again, like a regular dial. Yeah. It's like a current, uh, if you just looking at the graphic here, whenever you have an overlap in the red distribution, that's when the fundamental current gets the max speed. You are right, you are right. So actually, the, the, the way this, uh, I just uh, copied from this paper, they drew it is like what you said. They finally just drew the red and green as the total number of electron and hole. Red is electron, green is hole. So if you have the maximum overlap, you have the largest current, right? And, but I just bro broke it down into more details. But now basically, as you said, when you start with small overlap, then we are, uh, this is reverse side, right? Here we have small overlap, then you have from here, to here have some tunneling, then you keep increasing more overlap, more tunneling, more tunneling, and then it becomes less because of the band gap. Okay, so here there are two, and this is called Asaki dial because now you see something very interesting. It has so-called negative differential resistance. You increase the voltage, the current actually goes down. Is this okay? And why it is easier to see in the uh, cryogenic temperature? Because, because you also have the fermionic emission component. Fermionic emission is less or more at lower temperature. It's less, right? Because fermionic is it's just saying that you have some, just like your, your dust, right? The, the, the truck drive through the road, you have the dust distributing with some dense uh, dust or, or, uh, at the bottom and some dust, uh, less and less dust when you go up, right? So at high temperature, you have more uh, electron and high energy, then you have more fermionic emission. This will wash out the effects because you will see this type of current already. Well, this one is going down, but this one may be increased so fast that you actually, after taking the fermionic emission into account, you actually may see something like this. Because the fermionic emission current is large, and that's why you wash out the uh, effect. That is one thing. Another is that when you have a high temperature, although now we say that it is impossible to have tunneling from this point to this point, from this point to this point, but if you can have some defect or a system with the phonon, you can actually lose energy and then tunnel to a lower energy. Then as a result, you also will not see this, what we call the valley. The valley will be higher, right? And this is the so-called peak. And people will talk about the peak to valley, valley ratio to evaluate how good a Saki dial is. But the main point is this something called negative tunneling resistance. Why this is important? Do you remember your oscillator class? Yeah, negative, negative resistance then cause oscillation, right? And because with negative differential re resistance, you will be able to build an oscillator easily and then make the circuit very simple. So negative differential resistance is that many people have been looking for uh, for a very long time. Whenever there's a new technology, the technology they try to evaluate. Even people try to look at the neuromorphic circuits, whether a negative differential resistance can simplify the readout circuits to convert uh, the spike neural ne network. I, I don't, don't know exactly how to do that, but yeah, people publish paper on that. So what do you learn from here? A lot of stuff, right? I don't ask you to memorize everything or even to describe it from scratch. But if you look at Wiki Wikipedia, I hope that you will understand now what they are talking about, right? But the main point, of course, band diagram of a dial, you should know how to draw it. 
reverse bias, forward bias, forward bias. Right? To be frank, if you look, even you are not doing a device engineer, I think every circuit company should start with a question asking you to draw the band diagram of a P and dial, right? If you cannot pass through that interview, that question, how can you get that job? That's a, the most basic thing, right? And, and then don't, don't mess up with the band gap, uh, forward bias, reverse bias. And I hope that you can understand how you get negative differential resistance. If you forgot, not a big deal, but at least you know there's something called negative differential resistance. Okay, any questions? No, no, it just, uh, this have, when it is heavily doped, oh, I forgot to say that, it need to be heavily doped P type and N type. So this is N plus P plus, or N plus plus P plus plus. Why is that? Because you get this ne negative differential resistance is because you have a current before your band gap meets each other. When it is heavily doped, then your Fermi level is inside. And then you have this phenomenon. If it is not heavily doped, your Fermi level can be just at the conduction band. Then you don't have much tunneling components and eventually you only have this fermionic emission. You won't be able to get the negative differential resistance. Right? Your, 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 your curve will be just like this going up. Okay? So it needs to be heavily doped. Yeah. What do you mean by? <laughs> what do you mean by? If it is not for me, I'll let you go through the bank gap that is tunneling current. Right? You, you have energy lower than the barrier, but you can go to the other side, then that is tunneling. Yeah. Senator is going backward. You get tunneling. This is tunneling already. You, uh, when you go backward, this is center dial if you go backward. But here, negative defense is talking about forward bias. You get this negative shape, because N shape, or they call N shape, in the forward region. In forward region, I only expect the current keep going up when you increase the voltage. But actually, you go up and then go down and then go up again. Yeah, Senator is mostly talking about how you behave in the reverse bias. Difference between what? See, Asaki is all, or actually, they, you can say they are the same. Asaki is also a center dial, but center dial operate in the reverse bias. That's what I'm saying. You operate in reverse, but now we're talking about the forward bias. How you operate it? Yeah, because it. Because they don't, they do not talk as heavy as this. But Asaki can be used as a center dial. But then you have a very low breakdown voltage. Yeah. You don't. I will skip this because of time. Not important. Let me see. I guess I will also skip quantum interference uh, transistor, so we can spend some time to review the. Uh, Exam, not important. Uh, and then you have one less topic to worry about uh, for the meter. Uh, yeah, I, I better skip it. Okay, uh, the last topic I want to talk about before our circuit, before our midterm, is the uh, 1D transport, right? So uh, when you go to a very very uh, small device. You actually quantize the channel. So actually it becomes very easy to understand in some sense. 
So this is the channel, a transistor. Because it's so small, you, you, due to quantization we have discussed, you actually have a certain channel that you can go through, just like tunnel. You have a lot of tunnel. Uh, I cannot say tunnel, otherwise you think about tunneling. Just the lane on the freeway. Okay? And then this lane, you think, imagine how to say it, like in the junction of, uh, like between 880 and 280, right? 85, they merge, all merge to. Uh, 280, right? For example, many links merge into 280. Your 280 maybe only have five links or four links, and then you have a lot of uh, links coming in as a contact. You pour the car into it, like the electrons, right? So you have this channel for uh, transportation. So uh, this is then there's something called Landau Landau formula, right? So there is how they find the current due to channel quantization. Quantization. The current equals to the charge divided by the plant constant. And then you just integrate over the energy, right? Just go through all the possible energy. And then for each channel, each energy channel, you have a transmission coefficient. Okay, just like the first lane, how fast you go through, second lane, 50 miles per hour, third lane, 80 miles per hour, left carpool lane, 100 miles per hour. They have different transmission, right? And then how much uh, you can transmit, of course, depends how much electron you have on the left and on the right electrode. And this follows the Fermi direct distribution, right? Where the energy, the electron is, and then also the chemical potential, which is the Fermi level. Uh, depends how you reference it, right? You, you don't, because if you, at the left, you reference it as zero, at the right when you have a positive bias, you can go to negative, right? So you just integrate everything. And, but if turn out there, you start from zero, it doesn't hurt. So you can have electron going from left to right, and you also can have electron going from right to left. Right? So that is the fundamental of the quantum transport. You need to think it this way. Just like a freeway, I have so many lengths. You integrate over the energy. And then on the left, for each car, right? Whether you are ready to go into the right lane, second right lane, or carpool lane, you have a certain distribution. Here is signified by the Fermi direct distribution. And then it can just transmit to the, the other side. But at the same time, the other side can come back also, right? So the net current is not just the difference between these two. And that is the uh, current. And if you can count it, let's say it's not integration, you can just count it how many lane light in the freeway, right? How many cars is going from south to north and how many cars going from north to south. You just subtract them, then that is the net car current. Okay? Yeah, so Fermi direct distribution. So F12, right, equals to 1 over 1 plus exponential E minus mu divided by kt. Okay? Oh, this one confused you, right? Yes. So this is temperature. This is the transmission coefficient. Right. We don't go into the detail, but just a number that if you have a larger transmission, then you have a larger current. Okay? So this is the transport, and then I want to talk about what if you only have one channel? So the question is, okay, if I only have one channel, right, one link in, on your freeway, right, and then you are 100% transmitted, right, and maybe I put T first so that you won't get confused. 
If the transmission is equal to one, means no scattering, and only one channel, if you, this is the condition, then what do you think? You might think that because the transmission is zero, then I have uh, infinite co conductance. But actually, if you go through the theory, you always have a finite conductance because you have a big pad lead into a channel. Just many length goes into one single length. So there will be a finite conductance, which is equal to Q squared divided by H. This is called the quantum conductance or conductance quant quantum. Or in other words, you have a quantum resistance, which is equal to H divided by Q squared. So this is the smallest resistance you can get for one channel. I only want to introduce this concept to you. Uh, you might not have used now, but in the future you might see it. Right, so do not think that if everything is ballistic and cryogenic, then you don't have resistance. It has resistance because you go from a reservoir to a single channel, right? If you have a single channel forever, yeah, there's no resistance. But then uh, when you go from a large pad to a single channel, you due to this, uh, trans, uh, this, this uh, change, you will get a quantum resistance, okay? G is the conductance. So they're just inverse of, of each other. I forgot that it's what, 13.6 kilo ohm or something. I, I forgot the number. Forgot to write it down. Okay? Um, so what's so quantum about it? I mean, if you have a large charge, then wouldn't you see that friction still be there? Because this seems to be more like a physical constriction. Then, uh, but then you can have many channels, right? Then you will keep reducing. So you only get, in the quantum case, one channel. If one channel, you will get this conductance. Add one more channel, then you are 2x of the conductance. So let me show you what it means, right? So for example, here we are showing a wire and source, right? So again, what is a transistor? Do you know how to draw a transistor? Right, you have a gate, outside, source, drain, right? That is MOSFET, right? Then you form the channel here, right? There's a bulb, right? How about SOI? Source, string, SOI, you means you have oxide here, right? And what is the dep fully depleted and partially depleted SOI? Fully depleted means the channel is fully depleted. Partially depleted means the channel, if I say this is fully depleted, then a partially depleted is what? Maybe I have a thicker substrate, but it is not this, right? It's not fully depleted. I still, when it is not fully depleted, what is this region? What do you call it? Quasi neutral region. Yeah, I actually uh, mentioned this a few times before, right? So you. Hmm. Yeah, you, you better understand this. I have no choice. I ask you, ask you, either ask you some very difficult equation, right? Which we don't want. Or either, either you learn the concepts. And then I have the freedom to grade it relaxedly, right? If it's equation, you will just get zero if you don't know. So, it, yeah, better try to understand. Quasi-neutral region. And what is the meaning of quasi-neutral region? An opposite of depression. And what is depression? No carrier, because that electric field is stripped away all the carrier, right? And if you don't have electric field, then quasi means actually you have electric field, but not much. So as a result, it's still not neutral. You have the electron and hold it, right? 
How about double gauge? What is a double gauge? Fin fat. How do you draw a fin fat? Do you know what is a fin fat? Forgot? Yeah, it's a fin here. Saw string. And then you wrap it with a gate. Right? <laughs> what is a chai gate? Chai gate is even the top gate, right? You also have fin outside. Right, then you try it. Otherwise, it's a double gear. What is a gate all around? Go around, yeah? Or nano wire, right? I mean, you need to know this if you want to at least be a circuit designer. Because your company may ask you to use a FinFET technology or later nano wire, nano shit, right? If you don't understand this, <laughs> I say the thing wrong. Okay, now look at this. What is this? It's a 1D wire, so basically this is uh, just a 2D picture, so you can imagine it's a wire, so it must be a nano wire, gate or a run. This is the source, on the top is source, right? And here is the wire, they wrap with the silicon, okay? And which is the gate. And here plot the conductance and the threshold voltage. An interesting thing is that when you increase the conductance, you have some jump of the conductance. That is because of the quantized channel keep increasing. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you think about this, right? Uh, but it's not re referring to, maybe this is the same, I forgot. But you already have the discrete state, right? And when you increase the gate voltage, your Fermi level sweep up. Once you go through a subband, it's filled. That's one occupation state. Continue sweeping up, you don't have much, and then suddenly increase, then you fill up and in another subband, right? But here is channel, one channel, two channel. So my, I think that's what you mean by occupy state. Okay. Yeah. But this seems to be different than the reasoning that you showed for that side diagram. No, this is not exactly what I'm talking about quantum quantized channel. This is not exactly that. No. Quantum dot is just like this. You have discretized level and then you have Coulomb charging. Right? And that's why you have uh, need to reach a certain level in order to put in more electron. Yeah. No, no, here, this is not quantum dot. This is quantum wire. Here it's just talking about I have this discrete level and when you increase the gate voltage, the Fermi level will sweep across this level. Then you suddenly have more uh, conduction channel. Okay. You see what I mean? It's just like, uh, you know, sometimes the police try to slow down the traffic by blocking some lane, right? It's just like when you sweep the gate voltage, now they open the right lane, and then set, later they open the second right, third right, and then carpool lane. Then you will see this jump in conductance. Okay? It's not about a uh, Coulomb blockade in quantum dot. No, 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 the result looks similar, but Coulomb blockade is because you have electron inside. In order to, to inject one more electron, you need to have even higher energy due to Q squared over C. Yeah. Yeah. Right? This has nothing to do with charging. C does not come into the picture. It just open more length for you. The, the, the Coulomb blockade is just like, the first thing was occupied by a truck. Okay, and now I need to go faster in order to go to the second lane. Okay. Now we can discuss after the class. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I actually give you some hints already throughout this boring process, but I don't know if uh, you got it. Uh, now let me review the assignment two so that uh, we can give even more hints. 